This short presentation looks at two methods of identifying problems. Firstly, cause and effect diagrams, and secondly, Pareto analysis. Both of these techniques enable you to identify the causes that you should be looking at first. First we'll look at cause and effect diagrams. These identify the cause of the problems, data requirements, areas for further analysis where you may need to find out some additional information, and also the root cause of the problems. The cause and effect diagram is sometimes known as the fishbone diagram because of its shape, but it was founded by a Japanese uh, management scientist called Ishikawa. So it's also known as the Ishikawa diagram. In creating a cause and effect diagram, the first thing that you do is put the problem in the box at the right hand end of the diagram. You then create a tree leading to it. On each branch of the tree, at the end of each branch, you put a, a major cause. These are the things that you think where there may likely be problems. You then have a series of side branches. Let's focus in on these side branches. If we enlarge this area, we can see that we are looking at causes of the major cause. Eventually, at each cause, we vote to see whether it is the actual cause, is it a root cause, that is, the one that is actually responsible. The objective with cause and effect diagrams is to enable you to think to get down to the root cause. This means that you're actually solving the problem rather than f providing a temporary solution. Now, now to summarise. Cause and effect diagram. The problem is put in the right hand box. The horizontal line points to the problem. Each branch is a category of causes. Each branch pointing to the cause is a contributor. The steps in constructing a cause and effect diagram. Place the problem in the right hand box. Decide on the major causes. Traditionally there are the four M's. That is machines, your equipment, the men, your, your workforce, the management system and the quality of the materials. And you can brain cause then brainstorm then for the causes. These can be done either by focusing on a cause in turn, or by uh, randomly allocating them around the system. When we look at each cause, we should ask: Is it a root cause or a secondary cause? If it's a root cause, can it be eliminated? This solves the problem. Then, can these solutions be implemented? And finally, as engineers, is the solution cost effective? A few words of caution with uh, cause and effect diagrams. If one branch becomes too large, you might consider drawing it on a separate diagram. And if the causes are not evenly distributed, you have to consider, did you actually select the right major causes? Or do you have a group which is particularly biased towards one cause? In which case they can only see it from their point of view. The other important uh, technique for identifying the significant causes where we should put the effort first is Pareto analysis. Pareto was a Renaissance uh, economist in Italy and he worked out that 80% of the wealth lies with 20% of the people. How he managed that we can't be sure but the only thing we can be sure of it's an approximation.
Why do we use Pareto analysis? It enables us to separate the vital few from the useful many, i.e. to identify the ones where our effort is going to make the most impact. We could use it to identify major problem areas. We can also use it to identify major causes or effects. So what are the steps in Pareto analysis? Firstly, we group the data into categories. Uh, these can be suggestions from a brainstorming session, or it could be failures, causes or effects. You arrange the categories in descending order, dependent on the number of events in each category. And then, draw bar charts to visualize, visually present the data. The Pareto chart is a good way of presenting to management what's the most important thing and why you are tackling it. If you look at these diagrams, then the one on the left is uh, a descending plot. The most important feature is on the left hand side and you can see that solving that would solve 50% of your problems. The cumulative plot on the right hand side is an alternative way of viewing the same data. That shows that how you can get progressively closer to 100% performance as you uh, solve each of the problems. So, how do we interpret the results? The vital few appear on the left. That is, the places, the things that are most significant and where you're having most problems. There are issues. If the categories are too narrow, then the Pareto diagrams are flat. So you can't actually pick up between one or one and the other. Um, if you if you had a um, if you specified faults in too much detail, the danger is that you would end up with every everything having its own category. The alternative is the categories are too broad, in which case all the problems might fall under one heading. So you'd have one very big uh, um, angle on the on uh, tower on the left, uh, which doesn't necessarily tell you anything, help you understand the problem. Pareto analysis can be applied to the major categories to refine the analysis. So, what we've looked at, Pareto analysis, and we've also looked at cause and effect analysis.